G'day guys and welcome to Lawn Dreams. Today we're going to be installing drainage in my front yard. Um, when it gets a lot of rain here, you get a lot of resting water, especially along this channel behind me here. It just sits there for days and days. So I introduce you to my front yard project uh, in another video when I talked about the uh, Tiff Tough Bermuda grass that I plan to transplant throughout the yard. I started building uh, a bit of an extension on my fence here. Um, the plan is to get a roller gate spanning across here. So I dug that out. And it just alerted me to the fact that I've got so much standing water in the front yard here. So in an effort to divert some of this standing water from this gully here, I need to channel it down through to the storm water point, which is just behind the letterbox over here. French drains were, as we know, uh, invented in France. Back in the 1700s in France, they had an issue of uh, food and supplies down to the low-lying villages. Um, so what they did was they invented the French drain so they could uh, transport baguettes and croissants and frogs and whatnot down from the uh, elevated Paris to the foothills. What we're going to do is channel out this section down here um, so we can put the drainage in and we're going to have the drain coming down to the end of the property. Uh, now I have to divert the drain across the concrete here so first things first I need to get that concrete saw out and cut that up and then we're going to tap it into a stormwater point which is down here which leads out at the outlet on the street. What you can see is Aggie pipe uh, has little slots in it. Now those slots are in there so the frogs could breathe and also so the baguettes didn't get soggy uh, in the process of being transported. You want your frogs fresh and you want your baguettes crispy. So what I'm gonna use here is what they call uh, a socked pipe. So we've got this Aggie pipe here with the holes in it and it's actually got a sock uh, over the top of it. Now that sock uh, as job is to prevent um, silt and whatnot getting through the, um, through the cuts or the slots there in the Aggie pipe. So it keeps the pipe patent and open. It's probably not the best practice Best practice in the research that I've done is put your slotted pipe in without the sock and actually use uh, some landscaping fabric or geotextile um, to wrap around the whole agri in the pipe. So uh, probably not best practice, just a bit easier. Uh, it's a temporary solution to get us through and get that standing water out of the way so I can keep building my fence and get my sliding gate in place. This is the saw I'll be using to cut up the concrete. Uh, it's got a diamond tip blade on it. Uh, I borrowed this off the old man. I texted him and said, mate, have you got a slightly bigger angle grinder than the little uh, pipsqueak one that I've got? And he said, I've got an absolute beast for you to use, son. The reason I've got a trench across here is because this is the lowest point of the property. So to be able to get that full, I need to go across the driveway down at the base of the driveway in order to connect to the stormwater point in the garden there and send it out to the street. You can see here the driveway is all sunken and depressed as the footings has washed away from being under constant uh, subsurface water. Of course, there's a massive footing where the old letterbox used to be. There we go. So I've managed to locate the uh, stormwater point that I'll be tapping into to go under the footpath and out into the street. Um, this is actually a uh, decommissioned um, stormwater outlet, so I'm hoping there's not much blockage between here and the street. Um, but going back towards the house, it's no longer used. We've got an ex exit point on the other side of the front yard for our main stormwater off the house. Just can't get this bloody chunky letterbox footing out. Got it. That's the best. Oh, that for a letterbox? Seriously? Put it in your face, go on. Let it go, mate. Concrete cut out. The main annoying part of this job is now done. Got the trench running across the driveway. I've been digging trenches and laying Aggie pipe for at least 40 years. That's one of the cleanest concrete cutting trenches I've ever seen in my time. You bloody ripper. Tight surprise. Just a little bit of concrete cut out there. That's a damn big wheelbarrow. Guys, welcome back. So I've been pretty busy uh, since the last clips. It's a new day, it's a new dawn. Um, so I ran all of the drainage, the PVC pipe, through the concrete trench that I made there. And that's running out into the street. So I had to feed a three meter length of PVC pipe. So I had to trench all the way back up here. Ran that under the footpath. 
have to get up here to, uh, to get access um, to the broken pipe under there, so that's all running out to the street nice and patent. For some cyclists. Going by, lovely day for it. Found myself doing a little bit of night digging, which wasn't fun. I uh, started the job at about 4.30 in the Arvo, the next thing you knew it was night time, and I was halfway through digging up a nature strip, so potentially a little bit illegal, um, but got the job done. So in about three hours I've got half a cubic metre of concrete uh, being delivered. I need to get boxing the formwork for the concrete. To fill in this trench, I need to pull out these bits of concrete here. I left those in place so the car could still come in and out of the driveway. Um, so I need to get cracking. Well, we've got a concrete truck coming today, so we need to fill in the big hole that Daddy made in the driveway. I'm going to get up ice cream from the shop. Just going to use a bit of 25 by 150 rough saw uh, pine to box out the area for the concrete. There you go, that's our box, it'll go against the fence. So that's all the boxing finished up. Just got the box over the pipe there. And then we've got the boxing back here. So this boxing back here is to accommodate the footing for the roller gate, the sliding gate when that goes in. Obviously when the gate opens it needs to roll backwards across the fence. So what we're going to do now is just put some aggregates and stone in there and uh, peg out these boxes a bit more and be good to go for the concrete truck. Just checking the dodgy levels here. How's your stacker? Oh, I think it's not too bad. We can work around it. Yeah, not bad for Dodgy Brothers Incorporated. So just put a bit of trench mesh in there as well. So just to reinforce the concrete. And this is our guidepost here that will be uh, also there to support the electric gate. Enough down there, or did yeah, you, yeah. Did you hear that grass is already grown? It's too slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we uh, I live across the road from a plumbing supply place. One of the customers is actually a professional concrete. He saw us uh, battling away here, come across, bought his own tools, done some edging for us. Have a look at that. He's done the full troweling, smoothed out the cement. What a ripper! Do some concrete, it's a people magnet. See here, the concrete is now all dry. Quite a nice finish there. And uh, today it's finally time to dig the bloody trench down the side here to put the ag pipe down. This feels like the job that's gone on forever, but I'm happy to say that hopefully it should be finished today. Glyphosate that I've applied to this area of old lawn that I'm getting rid of is starting to do its thing. It's had two applications now. Uh, so I'll be soon ready to get the soil prepared. Uh, in readiness for plugging this patch of Tiff Tough Bermuda to spread it out across the rest of the front lawn here. You can see this is really, really dense, muddy, uh, borderline clay type soil. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to dig out. The method I am taking for that is basically a three cut method. maintain some of this grass, albeit it's a bitzer, it's a mixture of all species, it's nothing fancy. I don't want to just have this as a mud pit once I'm done, so I'm just cutting the tops off of the turf here. Dispose of the mud, 
We'll be filling that space up with aggregate on top of the pipe. I'll just put these grass caps back on top and uh, within a few weeks, even though it's in dormant season, they should, uh, they should take and I guess reseal the top there so it doesn't turn into a mud pit. There we go, trench mainly dug out now, about 10 metres. Uh, about 200 mil deep, 150, 200 mil wide. Tell you what, I should have been a plumber or a grave digger or something like that instead of YouTube sensation. Probably wouldn't pay as much, but damn, I'm good at it. I'm just going to go through with the trenching shovel uh, to clear that out. I use the larger shovel here to dig the main trench. I'm just going to go through with the smaller trenching shovel just to clean it out and smooth out the run. There we go, that's most of the drain dug out. So you want to try and keep it fairly level. Uh, you don't really want too many sort of peaks and troughs or undulations in there because you don't want low spots where the water will just pool and rest. So what I'm going to do now is just put a nice thin layer of aggregate at the bottom of the trench before I put the pipe in and then put the rest of the aggregate on top before resealing it with the little grass caps that I've made here. That layer of aggregate will do for us is um, for starters it'll make the trench fairly level we'll also um, ensure that the pipe is not laying flat on mud and that the actual slots in the slotted aggie pipe don't just become blocked um, by sitting in mud and resting in uh, still water it's time to lay out pipe thank god to connect the pipe this is pretty uh Pretty high tech stuff here. There's going to be a lot of uh, seasoned plumbers watching this going, why didn't I think of this stuff? You know, this guy just knows it all. So it's basically just jamming the Aggie pipe into the PVC. And I'm just going to put a screw through both the Aggie pipe and the PVC just so it doesn't become dislodged. I really hope I don't crack the PVC, but let's have a go. I should pilot hole, but I'm lazy. All good, be weird. We ourselves what's supposed to be a 10 metre pipe. We've certainly got a 10 metre trench. The pipe is actually about 7 metres. 8 metres. What's going on there? Right. I'm going to try and get creative here. Got some uh, artificial turf or landscaping pegs. I'm going to try and peg it out so I can stretch it to the max. Right, stretch those over. That's okay. I'm not going to put them through the slots. I'm going to bend them. Stretch them over the top of them. Beautiful. Still about two metres short though. What is going on there? I'm going to cut this pipe off here, seal it up. We're going to have eight metres of drain. We're going to be a happy family without sitting water. Life's going to go on. We're going to be okay. She'll do, mate. She'll do. Four days. I dig the trench, put the ag in, uh, lay the drain, cover it back up. It's about two hours, but obviously the time uh, to do all the job was in doing the trenching and the cutting of the concrete. I had to trench out to get the pipe to the street, uh, laying the concrete, and then of course putting the drain in. So thank goodness we now no longer have standing water. I hope on this side of the house. Uh, that's all this episode of Lawn Dreams. Give us a like if you enjoyed it, it's a bit of fun this time. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep it coming and you have a great day. Hard stripes guys.